The goal for this presentation is to give an overview of SOAP specification. At the end of it, you will learn what SOAP is, why we need it, where to use it, and also how to use it. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. It is a specification from World Wide Web Consortium. It's in it. The current version of SOAP is 1.2. A specification usually is a set of rules. In case of SOAP specification, it is a set of XML elements that the W3C defines that any two parties or three parties who want to communicate uh, in an inter interoperable manner can use these XML elements since XML has data as well as metadata. They use this format to easily communicate or communicate in a standard manner. Here is the SOAP envelope or most of the famous elements that are defined in the W3C SOAP specification. The root element is SOAP envelope. Within the SOAP envelope, we have two blocks, header block, then the body block. The body block has the payload information. So let me take an example. Let's say we are working on an online rail ticket book reservation system, wherein we allow the passengers to book their rail tickets online. At some point, they need to pay. So we integrate with a bank or a payment gateway, where we pass the credit card information. The payment gateway will take the information, get the payment done, and then uh, tells us whether the payment was successful or not. Based on that, we do the reservation. Let's assume that the bank is exposing out a web service, so based web service. To do this, it, the payload in that case will be the credit card information. Inside the SOAP body, we have all the credit card information in XML format. And the body also has a chain element called FOT, SOAP FOT. The FOT element is when something goes wrong on the bank or the payment gateway side. Let's say the credit card was has expired or uh, the information, the uh, address information is wrong or something is wrong with the credit card, then we get a SOAP fault back. All the exception information is wrapped inside the fault and it is sent back to the calling application, which is the reservation application. The header block usually is not used by our applications or not send out any, no data is put into the header block by our applications. Very rarely we touch it. If you want to send a version information or if you want to set, send a secure security information or authentication information, but usually the header block is for the web services standards. For example, the web services security standard defines that if you want to authenticate, you can use username token profile one way of authenticating for which you can pass the username and password within the header block using a particular name for an XML element called username and then using password as another element. The advantage is any framework that follows this standard can communicate with any other web services framework in a standard manner. For example, WCF, Windows Communication Foundation, follows the SOAP standard. It knows what WS security is. Now, if we are building our reservation application in Java and the banking application is in .NET, they both can exchange SOAP they follow WS standard called username token profile, WS security standard. They can authenticate, they can communicate very easily. So that's the power of having a SOAP envelope following the standard elements. Without that standard, where do we put the username and password? There is no standard way of defining it. If you are communicating with hundreds of applications, you have to tell each application that here will be my username, here will be my password. Since we have standards and they say they use the header block, it's very easy to interoperate. And that's the power of web services. That is where we use SOAP with HTTP. Right? SOAP on HTTP is nothing but web services, SOAP based web services. The other type is restful web services, which we'll talk in a future presentation. So we don't touch the SOAP envelope directly in our Java code or .NET code. Probably when the web services started up, we used to do that. We used to write parser programs, pass the XML message, then convert it back into a Java or .NET object. Now it has grown and evolved. We have frameworks. We have a SOAP engine embedded into each of these frameworks. The Windows Communication Foundation, the Apache CXF, Apache Access. All these frameworks have a SOAP engine which can serialize and deserialize the message that comes in into a Java object or a .NET object dynamically at runtime. The second thing this SOAP engine does, if you have watched my web services presentation, you already know that it also dispatches the incoming request to the appropriate method or the appropriate class in your application. So that's pretty much about so. All it has is a set of XML elements and the advantage as you as I already so, uh, told you, the advantage is since we follow the standard, there are several web services standards that use the header block etc and the applications definitely know that 
they, if they follow the standard, it's easy to interoperate at the same time. The entire message goes into the payload and if there is any fault, the applications know that it comes in the fault element. The XML NS here is the namespace which comes from W3C which is again a standard namespace. The only place probably you will see a SOAP message is if you use a TCP monitor tool or if you are using SOAP UI for your testing, for testing your web services, that's where you will be seeing this entire XML document. In a future presentation, you will learn the details of a SOAP fault, the chain elements of a SOAP fault and how to use it. Also, SOAP, with, SOAP attachments and MTOM. Right? Until then, take care.